Just hold on there, stationary, and watch the sun rise. What a delight to see the sun rise. I just needed to buy a moment there with you guys because I needed to get on my sandals. I couldn't paste in the, the, the text directly like I normally do. The notes wouldn't open for me, so I just had to do it little by little into the Facebook directly, and that delayed me. Here we are, coming down our little spiral staircase here. The gift of each new day, and yesterday's gone as is last week and July also, and 2022 also, they're gone. It's amazing how time runs through our fingers like water or fine sand. We can't hold it. Is there anything we can hold really? Possessions, how many economies suffered during COVID so quickly? Or when that bubble, real estate bubble in America happened 20 something years ago and houses that had high priced mortgages became half their value and people lost all their effort to build a home and own a home. And the war breaks out and the whole economy is, whole trade commerce paths are broken. Other people who come in to fill the gap make money, but the people who had all that trade are immediately uh, deprived of it. It goes fast. It goes fast. Today we're looking at a very special character. He became a huge hero for the Roman people when he was martyred because of his incredible moral strength in front of Roman power. He was a deacon named by Lawrence. And that uh, he had huge responsibility for looking after the poor and he was administering all their gifts of the disciples in Rome for providing for the poor. And obviously that's, that's quite a treasury like many major charitable organizations have as they distribute and help. I knew one priest who raised a hundred million dollars a year for the poor. And he was an, an Orbertine priest, and their rule is to give away everything at the end of the year, which he did. And so each year started anew, and his charity built up during, just in the aftermath of the Second World War. He was a Belgian priest, and he had pity on the Germans who had 
destroyed his own country, but he saw the poverty and the destitution of all the widows and mothers and little children in Germany and no housing because of all the destruction of the war, living in broken bunkers and all kinds of dilapidated possibilities. And so he organized charity. He asked his own Belgian people to give. And that organization grew and grew and grew and became, it's amazing how, how strong a charitable organization can become because of the goodness of so many people. But all that money went out immediately, uh, buying food and clothing and providing little by little uh, for all the people in need. And so Lawrence was responsible for all that uh, treasure in the, in the church in Rome. And the emperor came down on the church and, and when he was on trial, well, first of all, he was told to produce all the treasury within two or three days, and he said he would. So when he he brought the Roman officials to the treasury, it was in a big church, and he opened up the, the doors of the building, and all the people came out. They were the poor people of Rome, and he said, this is our treasure. There was such truth in that statement. As the treasure of money is, is nothing. It goes through your hands like sand. It goes through, through your hands like water. You can't hold it. And Lawrence was martyred. He was burned alive in fire. And it's said that he, it's reported that at a certain moment of his of his oblation, he was, he asked the, the executioners to turn him over, he said, I'm done on this side. Incredible strength of people who truly authentically love. And obviously that's not a strength that comes just from blood or character or temperament, it's grace. It's, it's a supernatural gift. It's beyond human, human uh, making and doing and producing. And, and, and God wants us to grow to that strength, the strength of those who give witness to him. And so this, uh, the readings today are, are showing us how to think about giving ourselves because at the end of the day it's not just giving money it's actually giving ourselves and we can't even control and hold ourselves we can do a little bit for our health be responsible we can do things for the family to strengthen the family bonds like these families here taking their vacations out for sunrise in the morning and it's um, amazing, you know. We can, we can do so many things, but at the end of the day, we don't control much. Who can control their health? Who can control their lifespan? Who can extend to 10 years? And suddenly, without notice, it's over. It's amazing how fleeting life is. And the other thing that's amazing, and it's an image that's used today in the gospel, is, is the seed. So this tree was a seed. And I imagine if you did some accurate research, you could find more seeds beside the one that grew here, that were in a spot where they couldn't grow. So the seed didn't grow. And you could have that seed today, but on the other hand, with this tree, you have millions of seeds and for decades already and a huge tree that gives shade I'm not sure if it produces any edible fruit and it's beautiful and there's a seed that falls in the ground and dies and bears fruit and we don't like dying dying in the sense of the dying of every day the self-giving of ourselves of accepting a demand from somebody and doing their will instead of mine, I die to my own will. To do an act of kindness, an act of charity, an act of helpfulness, 
an act of generosity. So just let's look at the text because they're powerful. Brothers and sisters, whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly. So we sow the seed and that seed is given to turn into a plant. That's our lives. Our life is, is like a seed. And the more we give it away in kindness, in forgiveness, in patience, the whole world is, is like this, all of nature. Each generation gives the next generation. And in the process is consumed in doing that. And the invitation there is, simply to contemplate nature. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it. And whoever gives his life will preserve it for eternal life. The great logic of generosity. We give away, but actually we get more. We become more. We grow as a human being. We grow in the image and likeness the more we give. Light comes into our lives and takes over all the darkness. And what we couldn't hold in our hands like money, we give away to help the needy and it becomes a huge treasure. It lifts up life, it gives courage, encouragement, it builds bonds of love. Whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each must do, each must do as already determined without sadness or compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. That's the source of that famous text. God loves a cheerful giver. Isn't that beautiful? And maybe that's actually also a reflection of an Old Testament text. And I don't know the answer to that little question right now. God loves a cheerful giver. You know, Paul is so penetrated by the scriptures that they flow through him. They're woven into his talk, into his penship. So maybe somebody wants to check that out. God loves a cheerful giver. It might be from a proverb. Moreover, God is able to make every grace abundant for you so that in all things, always having all you need, you may have an abundance for every good work. You may have an abundance for every good work. And some people have a bigger abundance. They can give the million dollar check for a charity, and other people give five dollars or one dollar, and it's a sacrifice for them, a genuine sacrifice, a genuine gift. A priest once came to Magdala from Mexico and he carried a letter and he gave it to us. And the letter was the, the penmanship, the writing of children in school. And they were from a very poor area of Mexico and they all gave a cent or a half a cent. It amounted the whole gift to 20 something or 40 something dollars, I forget exactly. And, but it was made up of all these children's gifts and generosity, how precious in God's eyes and how beautiful that they could participate and they participated with from their hearts as much as the guys who gave huge gifts that are also deeply appreciated because they were also great sacrifice gifts, generous gifts. God loves a cheerful giver. Birthday present for some little festivity just for friendship and gratitude, little gifts to be a giver. And you know something beautiful as well is to be a good receiver. 
to allow other people to be givers, to allow them to give their little flower. Like a little child goes to the grandparent and says, I want to give you my little teddy bear. And the child needs to learn to give. What a great educational enrichment for children when parents teach them to be generous when the children's joy and giving is celebrated and that helps to cement their readiness to be people of gift because we're all a gift to each other and sometimes greed and avarice and grasping and grabbing can take over in our lives and we become less human less divine in such behavior, such attitudes that form our soul and our mind and our heart. Come follow me and they left everything and followed him. And those who do don't regret it. And I'm blessed that 49 years ago In about a month's time, a priest came to my school and presented a call. My heart was touched. Leave everything. I would have inherited the farm, as actually I was preparing to do a year earlier in terms of staying at home from school and, and being a farmer. And I owned the farm at home. My brother has it now, raised a wonderful family. And I have absolutely no regret. Leave everything. I don't own anything. The only thing I own is a crucifix for my profession. But these are, even to give up things is only a training to give up ourselves. To give up ourselves. And that's done in family life very much. <clears throat> even yesterday there was a family here just lovely children, really lovely children. Some of them already emerging into teenage years and just it looks so beautiful, so healthy, so smart, so intelligent, so well-educated. And then just noticing the parents and you could see the similarity. You know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Lovely people, good people. But you could see the effect of the self-giving of the parents and the children in the sense that the parents were aging. They were, they were, um, you could see the years, the, the self-giving also has wear and tear. And there are scars and there are uh, age shows. And that's the self-giving, that's the, the sea that falls in the ground. That's self-giving. And those who are then under compelled to give themselves in the case of martyrs their lives are taken away but actually racing ahead of their the compulsion that they're already giving themselves they're already that self-gift races much faster like the speed of light ahead of the of the executioner's sword ahead of the flames springing out of the fire that's consuming that body of saint lawrence Because love races ahead and reaches the goal so quickly, more than the speed of light. And then we have that beautiful Psalm 112 today. Blessed the person who is gracious and lends to those in need. I think we'll leave it like that. People, God bless you. See you later, alligators. I can't see what's on the screen. I found the sun is so intense in my eyes. So I'll switch back. I think I can do that. Let's see here. Yes, there we go. So God bless you. See you later, alligators. Uh, if you're finding it hard to be generous and to give, ask for the grace. Lord, make me more like you because you're the extraordinary source giver of everything. <laughs>